The Lies We Believe About Life, Professor Donna Edwards, Certified Addiction Treatment Counselor 4. The truth must essentially be regarded as in conflict with this world. The world has never been so good and will never become so good that the majority will desire the truth. Soren Kierkegaard. The wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 19. Hello everyone. I'm a critic of New Age cycle babble. Few things get me more lit up than the unbiblical platitudes that often come out of pop psyche world. When I see the latest version of what passes for wisdom in this secular landscape, I think this statement the Apostle Paul made when he wrote, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers and say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. That's in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 4. I believe we are living in those times. And in this lesson, we will explore five of what I consider the most destructive of these self-help teachings that are today passed around as the truth. But first, let's assess. Complete the following self-assessment questionnaire on these teachings using this skill. Note that as in the previous lesson that I have added some additional lies not included to the accompanying lies we believe book. I will tell you up front that these are godless unbiblical ways of thinking, but I want you to answer as honestly as you can as to whether or not you have adopted them into your view of life. In other words, be completely honest about the degrees to which you believe these different views and try not to let the fact that they are wrong influence your answer. As always, avoid using the neutral response number four as much as possible. From my perspective, these are all faulty ways of thinking about life. Unfortunately, these teachings tend to be offered to us as etched in stone truths from some self-help books and seminars offered by experts in the field of personal growth and development. Look back through your answers and circle any statements you give a five or higher. As these responses suggest, you are looking at life in a destructive and unbiblical manner. I'm really not trying to rub your nose in it, just simply bringing it to your attention. Let's turn our attention now to the truth. In your composition book or journal, write down why each of these statements is unbiblical and likely to cause you problems in your life. You may not agree with these erroneous ways of thinking and you may have a hard time coming up with a biblically solid read to these statements. So I've provided the biblical teaching for each statement. You will have to take it from there. View number one, 
You can have it all. I deny myself nothing my eyes desired. I refuse my heart no pleasure. Yet, when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless, chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. That's in Ecclesiastics chapter 2, verse 10 through 12. View number two, you shouldn't have to wait for what you want. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the person who seeks him. Lamentations 3.25 View number three. You can do anything you set your mind to do. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Job 38.4 View number four. Being happy is the most important thing in life. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Romans 15 and 1. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. View number five, life should be fair and easy. There is something else meaningless that occurs on earth. The righteous who get what the wicked deserve and the wicked who get what the righteous deserve. Ecclesiastics 8.14 I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. John 16, 33. View number six. People are basically good. There is no one righteous, not even one. Romans 3, 10. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. Romans 7 and 18. View number 7. Everyone needs to have higher self-esteem. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. That's in Romans 12 and 3. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, 
even death on the cross. Philippians 2, 6 through 8. View number 8. You can't love others until you love yourself. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Luke 6 and 27. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. John 13, 34. View number nine. You shouldn't judge anyone. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. Proverbs 31 and 9. You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Matthew 7 and 5. Think of yourself with sober judgment. Romans 12 and 3. View number 10. All guilt is bad. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. For the worshipers would have been cleansed once and for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. Hebrews 10 and to view number 11 you should think positively brothers and sisters stop thinking like children first corinthians 14 20 finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians 4 and 8. View number 12. God can be anyone you want him to be. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Isaiah 40 and 25. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. 1 Corinthians 3 and 12. Hello, everyone. The bottom line is the world we live in is a frequent source of teachings and platitudes that are pleasant to hear, but are simply not true. Adopting what they say may make us feel better, but it isn't really better for our souls. We want to hear that we can have it all even though that is impossible because choosing one thing always means not choosing something else. We want to believe we shouldn't have to wait for what we want because that allows us to justify our impulsive and self-gratifying natures. We want to believe we can do anything we set our mind to do because we don't want to face the fact that as finite and fallen human beings, there are limits to what we can do and what we can become in life. We want to think 
that being happy is the most important thing in life, even though we know becoming mature and God honoring human beings is vastly more important. We want life to be fair and easy, though we know that it will be unfair and difficult at times. We want to believe that people are basically good, though we know there is nothing good or righteous about our fallen nature. And that turning that around requires supernatural power. We want to think all any of us needs is more self-esteem when the truth is we need more humility about who we are. We want to accept the idea we can't love others until we love ourselves because it gives us a hall pass on obeying the command to love other people no matter how we feel about ourselves. We want to buy into the false notion we shouldn't ever judge other people's behavior. When the Bible is clear that we should not arrogantly judge other people as if we are better than them, we want to think that all guilt is bad because true guilt over having done something wrong is painful and requires us to make amends. We want to believe our thoughts should always be positive when in fact the Bible tells us to focus on what is true, whether it is positive or not. We want to believe God can be anything we want him to be because that allows us to justify seeing him as our own Santa Claus who will give us whatever we want in this life. I would argue the enemy wants you to buy into what the world is teaching, hook, line, and sinker so he can reel you into the boat of being disconnected and anxious as you go through life. What they say is not to place the place to go how you will live your life. The Bible is the only valid source and it provides the proper antidote for wordly teaching that scratch your itching ears but leave you worse off in the long run. Don't buy into worldly wisdom. The Apostle Paul was shooting straight when with us when he wrote for the wisdom of the world is foolishness in God's sight that's found in 1 Corinthians 3 and 19 when it comes to how we live life let God work through his word and by truth and do not sell it Proverbs 23 23 Select three lies that we discussed in this lesson that you tend to struggle with the most and spend some time this week meditating on the verse that represents the biblical truth to counter each of those lies. Ask God to help you get the most meaning and significance from them as you can. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will help me live in this world, but not think the way the world does. Help me to accept that I can't have it all in life, to be patient in wanting for the things you want for me, rather than impatiently going after all the things I want in the here and now and to accept the limitations I have as finite human being. Help me to know it isn't possible to achieve all things I set my mind on, to not go out expecting life to be fair and easy, and to handle unfairness and difficulty the way your son did. Father, I ask, I also ask that you would help me to see that all people have fallen 
inclination to sin without thinking this makes people worthless or awful. To have an accurate sense of myself from the perspective of how I perform each day. Neither thinking too highly of myself nor too lowly. And to actively love others regardless of how I feel about myself. Help me to refrain from being judgmental toward others while judging the actions of others the way you do. To see guilt about my sin is a healthy thing while not falling into self-hatred and self-condemnation and to avoid the trap of positive thinking and instead focus my thoughts on what is true, whether they are positive or not. And help me to not turn you into who I want you to be, but to see you as you truly are. In the precious and holy name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.